Remain seated. First book of Kings. First Kings. Kings chapter 1, verse 32. From 32 to 34. First Kings. First Kings. No, First Kings 1. 1. From verse 31 to 34. <coughs> From 31 to 34. Chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 31 to 34. From 32 to 34. Yeah, very well. Solomon is made king. And King David said, Call to me Zadok, the uh, priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah, the son of the Joad. So they came before the king. The king also said to them, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and have Solomon, my son, ride on my own mule and take him down to Gihon. There let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel. My brethren, the word of the Lord describes that David was victorious. <coughs> in one of his endeavors and wars and every one of his battles. But in order for him to be victorious in a war, there needs to be a war. In order for someone to be victorious in a battle, there needs to be a battle. And the kingdom of David was a kingdom of intense wars, in the intense battles and wars. Many rose up <coughs> against David. And because why many people rose up against David? Because David was a man according to the heart of the Lord. And because they, why David was a man according to the, the heart of a God was because of his characteristics. He was a valiant man. He, he knew how to play instruments. The Lord was with him. And there are many other, he knew the, the word of the Lord, and a few words that I forgot. David was a shepherd. And while he was taking care of the sheep that were not his, and what is, was interesting that was that it, the sheep were not his, they didn't belong to him, they belonged to his father. But he took care of the sheep like if the sheep were his. He had the same zeal, the same care, and the same love. And when the sheep were, they were in a situation of danger, of risk of their lives, the Bible says that David went there and placed himself between the sheep and the enemy and defeated the enemy the bear, the lion. So afterwards, when the people of Israel was being uh, confronted by the giant uh, Philistine called Goliath, for 40 days, David went there <coughs> and said, who, are, who is this one who is, who is uncircumcised to challenge the arm of the living God? So then David goes up, he faced that giant, and in the name of the Lord of hosts, so with spears and uh, arrows and swords, but I go against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And there he was victorious in the battle. But in the life of David, there were plenty of persecutions. King Saul persecuted David. The son of David, the oldest, he 
caused a harm to David. The other son, Absalom, he tried to to take over the kingdom of the from David. So for David, there were plenty of trials, problems, adversities. There were always in the life of David. That son caused Absalom caused David to flee from the city of Jerusalem. And what it is interesting about David is the following. David, while doing this persecution from his son, he still loved his son. And he came to one of his generals and asked him, asked him not to do any harm to his son. David loved even his enemies. So those are characteristics that were in the life of David that caused God to choose him. In the house of David, there were eight men. And in that chain of succession, he was the last one. The last one who would have inherit right to the inheritance in the house of David was his oldest brother. David was the least one. He's the smallest one. There's a text in the Bible that says the following. The first are going to be the last, and the last are going to be the first. So when the prophet Samuel went to the house of Jesse, the, the father of David, he said, it's not any one of those. The father of David, and left David with the sheep, taking care of the sheep. Then Samuel said, we are not going to sit at the table until this, the youngest one is here with us. So when he arrived in the house of his father, he was anointed king upon Israel. Oh, there was, in those days, another king, King Saul. And David understood that that was not the moment for him to become the king. He was not king. Was He was only anointed to become a king. It was different. So he was able to uh, wait on the Lord for the time so that the project of God would be fulfilled in his life. He waited with patience in the Lord and the Lord inclined to him his ear and heard his plea and exalted David. That's why we speak about the work of the Holy Spirit. But we use David as in the, when what he didn't fail because David had flaws, but the message is not it. In what he didn't fail, he is the t type of our, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So the king was trusted to David. And there was a promise from God upon one of the children of David. Because God said that there were not going to be lacking in David uh, a male son that will sit on the throne. But in those days, the third son of David rose up because the first two had died. So then the third son of David, Adoniah, when he saw the father and saw the father was old, the uh, his father was on his last days, he was about to depart. So then he makes a decision to proclaim himself king. And God didn't choose Adoniah to be king. He had the right, according to human law, he had the right for the succession of the throne. But David was not chosen by law. David was chosen by grace. The word of the Lord speaks of Abraham and then Isaac and then Esau. Isn't it like that? No. It goes from Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. 
But who had uh, right? Was it Jacob or Esau? Was Esau according to the law? But God chose Jacob. I love Jacob and abhorred Esau. So the choice of God was not through succession. It was not because the, the oldest one, the one's greatest ability, the better one, the one that stands out more, the better looking one. Because Adoniah was good looking. Had, had good looks. But God didn't choose someone because of their external appearance, but because of their interior. David was not chosen because of his appearance, but because of his heart. But if we translate the Bible, David, to Hebrew, it means beloved. God loved David. He, cho he called and chose to him to be king over Israel. And God had promised that his son Solomon would reign after him. But Adonai felt like he had the right to reign. And the word of the Lord, my brethren, says that he thought, well, from this day forward, I will be the king. So now let us celebrate so that everyone, everybody knows, so that Israel knows that from this day forward, I am the one who gives orders. I am the king. So then the word of the Lord says that a man called Abiatar, Abiatar was a, a priest from the lineage of Eli. Remember Eli? From uh, the time of Samuel, they they didn't have a vision manifested. The Lord didn't speak with the house of Eli. He had two children, often if and air, that were worthless. <coughs> they would take what was consecrated to the Lord from the offerings. They did what was an abomination in Israel, and his father would not correct them. So now, to the parents who or do are who are about to be parents, correct your children. America may say something else. The Brazil may say something else. The governments, the psychologists, but the Lord is saying, correct your children and teach them on the path that they need to walk on. So that when they grow up, they may not go astray. Hit them with the, the rod. David also speaks about this. Your rod and your staff give me comfort. David was also corrected by the Lord, wasn't it? When he entered into difficulty, God corrected David. God loves you, and you feel the love of God when he corrects you. And we, when he corrects you, it's because he's concerned with your life and he loves you. So that priest didn't do that. The children of Eli, he, they would uh, steal the fat. The bro brothers spoke about the, the fat and last service, about the fat and the sweetness. The message was about that. Whatever he said yesterday, that's what it was was a moment in which God has reserved for Israel to celebrate, to, to commemorate, because that was a holy day. It was a day that was consecrated to the Lord. But the fat of the animals, of the sheep, especially the, the fat that was over the kidney, it had to be burnt as a sweet smell to the Lord. And the children of Eli, they would take of this feet, fat, and fat is related to emotion, to love. And what what's the Lord trying to show this? That the love of the Lamb needs to be offered to, the, to God. All the honor and glory be given to you, Lord, not to men. But he wanted this honor to himself. But the honor has to be given to 
to God. And his father, their father, didn't correct them. So there, when there came a, ma a moment, the Ark of the Covenant was stolen. Ophni and Phine died. Their wives died. And the blessing of God was taken away from them. Eli was fell off the chair and broke his neck. And this individual here, Abiatar, he was part of this lineage of a priest that was uh, bankrupt, uh, a priest where God didn't speak with. So Adonai called this man to him, to be beside him. Because he, if he had called the priest uh, that God spoke with, the priest would tell him, Hey man, you have not been chosen to be king. So then he, is, he chose one that God didn't speak with because that person would be in agreement with his will. So then he called Joab. Joab was the commander, commander of the army of David. Joab was the son of Zeruiah, who was sister of David. Joab had done wonderful deeds. For a period, he helped greatly the cause of David, King David. But there were characteristics in the life of Joab that were in agreement with King David or with the will of David. Joab, for example, he killed two generals, Amazah, Absai, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it? Amazah and Absai, I think. And Abner. Abner and Amaza. Very well. So he came to one of those generals, and when he killed him, he killed him in time of peace. There was a covenant, covenant between David and them. David accepted them into the kingdom, and they were better than Joab. And Joab, therefore, jealous of them vengeful because one of them in a battle had killed Joab's brother and he had not forgotten that. He kept that anger, the bitterness in his heart. He wanted vengeance. And the Bible says that the vengeance is mine, says the Lord. But he was a vengeful man. He didn't forgive. And that matter about forgiveness is something very complicated because if I don't forgive, oh, Benaiah, <laughs> if I don't forgive, I am not going to be forgiven. That's, that's it. There is no agreement. So this man, Joab, he embraced one of the commanders of David grabbed him by the beard, which was a sign of respect and love. He came close as if he were his friend. And he takes the sword and and stab him on between the fifth um, rib. And now he kills a commander of the army of David. And at that day, the Bible says that his belt was stained and his sandal were stained. The belt speaks of the justice to be adjusted to the work of the Lord, the work of the Holy Spirit of God. He was not just, he was unjust. He was uh, deceitful. He came close and the person thought he was going to be, I was being well received, but in fact, he had evil intentions. He was killing him. The enemy came, comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That was the enemy. Sometimes we think that person is a friend, but that person is an enemy. In the word of the Lord says, my brethren, that, that he stained his belt and the sandal. So then from that day forward, his walk was being 
stained by that vengeance, by the mistake that he had committed before the Lord. God was not pleased with this. David didn't authorize that. And then afterwards, son of David, Absalom. Then Joab goes there. The order of the king was, do not harm my, my son. I know as he was persecuting me, he was wrong, but don't do anything against him. And the Bible says that this Joab went there and killed David's son. Another crime, he killed three people, two generals and the son of the king. And now I ask my brethren, the thing that God's going to leave it, leave it alone? David speaks of something that is very interesting about Joab. He said, the son of Zeruiah it was worse than me. <laughs> the son of Jeru was worse than me. And when I began in my walk, his spiritual walk, as a pastor, he says something to me that I never forgot. He said, in the church here, the worst is me. And the best is Jesus. No one here can be better than Jesus here. And no one can be worse than the pastor. The, pers the pastor is the worst and the, the best is Jesus. And now Samuel, when he anointed David, there was a moment in which he wanted to be better than God. When God rejected Saul, so that now transfer the kingdom to David. Then now he was uh, sorry for David. How for how long will be uh, sorry for Saul since I have rejected him? You want to be better than me? So David tells the following: This son of Zeruiah is worse than me. So he has no place in the kingdom. The pastor says to the intercession group and spoke to me the following. If there is a problem in the church, if I am who is a pastor, cannot resolve it, you, none of you is authorized to resolve it. If I cannot discipline that person, no one here is authorized to discipline that person. And if I did not kick him out of the church, nobody is allowed to do this, the same. Because I'm the worst here. And David, there were there was a person found out that there was a person worse than him in the kingdom of David in the work of the Holy Spirit that cannot be somebody worse than the king and and better than the king as well so because of those characteristics this individual he was called to participate on the kingdom of Adonai then we can think oh boy so much baggage. What a crowd he found. The Bible says that the abyss caused another abyss. And that's what is happening here. An abyss calling another abyss. And this crowd, they wanted to reign. They wanted to take care of the kingdom. They wanted to inherit because the problem was the inheritance. They wanted to take on the inheritance and they when they went to celebrate that union they go outside of Jerusalem so outside of the plan outside of the project of God they went to a place called Fount the Fount of Rogel if I'm not mistaken Fount of Rogel also known as the fount of the dragon or fount of the serpent. When you speak about dragon and serpent, you speak about the enemy of our souls. He had a covenant with the enemy of our souls to take over the inheritance of God. And in this covenant and the fount of Rogel, the fount of the dragon, the fount of the serpent, 
The Bible says that there was a, a death of many sheep. Many sheep were killed. And that's the care that we as sheep have to be have to have. We need to be careful with Adonai. We need to be careful with Adon Joab. We need to be careful with Abatar. Do not participate of a banquet on the fount of Rogel, in the fount of the dragon, in the fount of the serpent. Because there they have sacrifices of sheep. So when David took knowledge of what was happening, the word says that David conclaimed the people. He also conclaimed the priest and also a prophet. And he also called a general. But the characteristics of the priest, the prophet, and of the general were completely different than the characteristics of the people that Adonai had called to be, take part in his kingdom, to take part in his ministry. They were different. So the people that have been called to his kingdom, the king of Solomon, to make Solomon the king of Israel, was Zadok. Zadok the priest. Zadok was the lineage of Samuel. Yes, I spoke about Samuel here. We, we, we were praying for the brother. And Samuel ministered before the Lord. And Samuel was before the Lord. And Samuel served the Lord. And Samuel heard the Lord. So the Lord called Samuel and said, Samuel, and Samuel would ask God, speak because your servant is listening to you. And he was young. So Zadok Zeda was from this lineage, from a, a priest that heard the Lord and obeyed the voice of the Lord. So then also the Lord calls Nathan, the prophet. Nathan, he was not present And the feast in Rogel, on the feast of the dragon, the feast of uh, the serpent. He was not even called because he was and not in agreement with those things because he was a prophet, a God. And he knew that God was not in that place. He knew that God had not chosen Adonai to reign. But who was going to reign through a revelation of the Lord was going to be Solomon. And the other individual was Benaiah. Benaiah was the commander of the guard of David. He was a not worthy man. Benaiah killed two lions alone. His type of servant that was able to overcome in a single battle the flesh and the enemy. Benaiah he killed a lion inside of a cave and during the time where it was snowing. So he was a servant of God. And in the moment of coldness, spiritual coldness, in the moment of the absence of light and revelation, he was, uh, he was not allowed himself to be overcome by those things, but he was victorious. He went there and destroyed and the servant of the Lord, one of the characters of the servant of the Lord is this. Jesus himself, through his, through the apostles, said the following, because you are more than victorious. So he was victorious. He killed three lions. The flesh, the enemy, the spiritual coldness, the, the laziness, the world. So he had those characteristics. He also killed an Egyptian man. 
with a spear that was from an Egyptian man. So they feed the flesh, the enemy, but he defeated men. Sometimes defeating a lion or a bear is easy. But or defeating yourself can be complicated. So David said the following, but you were a man equal to me. We went together to the house of the Lord. It was the greatest enemy of David was himself. And this man, Benai, he overcame. He overcame this man. The natural man. The reason. Human argument. He overcame. So my brethren, in that feast, in that banquet, the Lord called those people and why then call God calls Benaiah, Nathan and, and Zadok the priest, the prophet and the commander of the guard a warrior because of their qualities because of the characteristics they represented eternity there were the, a evil trilogy on one side and the trilogy of the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit on the other side. That's why they have been called, they have been conclaimed. There's a song that says the following, there is a work that God wants to, a work of holiness. Who is willing? Exactly. Those people that were willing to do the work of the Lord, those people, they were willing to the, the project. Those people were willing not only to hear the king, but also to obey the king. Because listening to the, the thing, listening to the king, Joab also heard the king, but he didn't obey the king. But it is to hear and to obey. It is faith and obedience. Those are the characteristics of the kingdom of David. And then afterwards, he, it was transferred to the kingdom of Solomon. So those people, they have been called to enter where? Many of them, where were they called to enter into? They were called to enter into the presence of the king. So those are the characteristics in the life of the servant of God that cause the servant to be called and to enter into the presence of the king. Many are called, but few are the ones who are chosen. They have been chosen to enter. That's how it's written. The king David then, so then King David said, call Zadok, uh, Benai, son of Joiada, and then uh, they enter in the presence of the king. My brethren, in order for us to enter in the presence of the king, we need to have those characteristics. It's necessary for us to have those characteristics in our lives in order to, for us to enter into the presence of the king. To hear, to hear, to hear the king. When we come up to the house of the Lord, will come up in, to enter into the presence of the, the Lord to, to hear the king. Isn't it true? Is the church worth for something else? No. The purpose of the church is first to enter into the presence of the king and to hear the king. Apostle Paul said that we have to have, need to have boldness to enter into the sanctuary through the precious blood of Jesus. Because there was the place of the people, the holy place, and the holy holy of holies and there was a separation between the holy place and the holy of holies so Jesus there was a veil that was separated no longer separates it was ripped from top to bottom the barrier the obstacle the wall was removed so when Paul says 
that you need to have boldness to enter into the sanctuary. You're, you're entering into the, the place, or holy place. You're entering into the presence of the king. So those men have been called to enter, to be in the presence of the king, to hear the king. And the king spoke with those people. He spoke with those people. Take upon you the servants of the of, of your Lord. Who were the ser servants uh, belong? Who does, did the servants belong to? To the Lord. Take upon you the servants of the Lord. So the church body of Christ. Gather up. Congregate. Because God, or the King, it didn't want to constitute. He didn't want to put his successor, Solomon, only conclaiming those three people. How about the remaining, the servants? All of them had to participate because the church is a body. And everyone's important. Every person has a place in the body. And the project of God is for the entire body, is for all the servants. There were two individuals when Jesus died. They didn't understand the things, so then they went to Emmaus. But those two men, they had eaten of the bread. They had taken part on a banquet. That's what Jesus went there after them. And he spoke to them on the way so that they would understand things. They didn't understand anything. But they said, Lord, stay with us because the day is coming up. So then Jesus entered into their house, house to stay with them. And when Jesus picked up the bread and broke the bread, they understood one thing. My place in Oyemos is my place is Jerusalem because I'm part of the body. I'm part of the church, the Lord, the faithful church. So here the Bible says the following. Take with you the servants of your Lord who were gathered there were the servants of the Lord. It was not those who were following Adonai. They were the servants of the Lord. In the kingdom of David, there are people that were following Adonai. But there were also the servants of the Lord. Uh, I'm not speaking of denomination. Sometimes you use the expression, Baranatha Christian Church, Church Assembly of God, this and that. That's wrong. Because none of them are, is a church. They are only denomination. There are only two churches. The faithful and the unfaithful. The ones who were in the fount of Rogel following Adonai, and the ones who were in the presence of the king proclaiming and saying, Hail the King Solomon. Take upon you the servant of the Lord. And something else, have, have them come up. Have them come up. The path to David goes up to deviate from hell that is at the bottom. The fount of Rogel was was at the bottom, was away from Jerusalem, outside of Jerusalem. From the city, city of Jerusalem is in a hill. The fount of Rogel was at the bottom, outside of Jerusalem. So the path of life is to deviate from hell that was at the bottom. So the path is the same. The direction is the only thing that changed. I'm the path and, and the truth. Whoever believes in Jesus, if you don't believe, you're already in the fount of Rogel. Have Solomon come up. The meal who is mine. On the meal who is mine. So Solomon you need to have a place of uh, where he stand out where everybody may be able to identify him. 
he was above all because he was on top of the mule, the mule of the king. The mule, we know that it is a hybrid animal. Did you know that? It's a mixing of of a donkey with a horse or of a, a female donkey and a horse or a, a male donkey with a female horse. Nobody's going to be upset here. And songs of, of Solomon in the uh, character of, Sir, of Pharaoh are compared to my friend. It's not because it was a horse, but because of a characteristic. The horse of the, ha the cart of Pharaoh, the archer was there upon those animals, and they would go to the war. If, if the warrior was wounded or killed, the horse would continue the battle alone. The horse would not be stopped. So the project of God for our lives is this. 1,000 will fall to your side and 10,000 to your right, but you're not going to be harmed. I pr continue to the target with sovereign vocation, which is Christ Jesus. So it's a, a mixing of Solomon. And Song of Solomon, he says that uh, you are uh, tanned. The church is tanned. It's not white. It's not yellow. It's not red. It's not black. It's tanned. So in other words, a mix of all the nations, tongues, tribes. It is throughout the planet. Because the desire of the Lord is to save everyone. Go throughout the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Because God loved the world. So this is another characteristic. And he said, Mule, that is mine. A mule, that is mine. It's my church. So he will be sitting upon my church. So when you speak about seeing, sitting down, you speak about throne, speaking about also a judgment. Whoever is in the throne, in Revelations 19, and saw a great white throne. So whoever is going to reign, whoever is going to judge, is Solomon. The kingdom belongs to Solomon. He is going to be the judge. He is going to be sitting at the throne. And Nathan will continue uh, exercising the function that Nathan has. Nathan is a prophet. Zadok will continue with the function of, of Zadok, Zadok, or the prophet, the, the priest. Benai will continue the, the position of Benai. Every person remain in the position with which he was called. Amen. And the servants. The servants will continue exercising their role as servants. But they're servants of whom? They're servants of the Lord. So that all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory may be given to the Lord. Have uh, Solomon go up in the mule who is mine and have him go down to a Gion. In the Bible, Gion has a different name, the Fount of Gion, also Fount of Bethesda. Remember the Fount of Bethesda? An angel would come down sometimes to stir the water and whoever came down to the Fount would be blessed. So the angel that is stirring the water, whoever comes out, comes down first, is blessed. But there's, there was a man there that had no one else, no one to help him. So the Lord spoke to him the following, take up your bed and go home. He was healed. So that was the place where the Lord is present. God is present, always ready to bless us. So the fount of Geon was the fount of the one who was needy. 
uh, fount of Bethesda, the fount of the living waters, or the waters of life. So this is the place where the Lord consolidate His work and His project. The word the Lord says the following, and Zadok and the priest and Nathan the prophet, and there, there they will anoint a king upon Israel. So in this fount of Jehon, Jehon, and how's the Jehon? The, the fount of Bethesda, and the fount of the living waters, the anointing, the authority, the government, the glory, the honor, the praise is to Solomon because in whatever he didn't fail is it symbolized the Holy Spirit. So it says the following, there they will anoint him king upon Israel. So all of you are going to gather to proclaim that Solomon is the king of Israel. So he is the king of this house, he is the king of this church. So, and more than that, because it's not enough to say that Solomon is the king of the house and the king of the church. Solomon also needs to be our king. He is our king. So there they will anoint king upon Israel and then they, you will sound the trumpet. Why sound the trumpet? Why sound the trumpet? It's to proclaim, to announce. So now in the house of the Lord, the fount of Jehon is to a place to proclaim. Is a place to proclaim, to announce, to say to the world, to the entire world, that our king is not Adonai, but our king is Solomon, is the Holy Spirit. And then uh, you will tell, Hail the King Solomon. Hail the King, Hail the King, Hail the King. Hail the king. Where's the song? <laughs> So that's what it is. There's a place where we're going to say, Hail the King, the King Solomon. Amen. We are here to proclaim only one thing. Hail the King, Hail the King Solomon. Let's have a song. That's, that's the one, Hail the King, Hail the King.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to vote now a word of glorification of the Lord. I want to praise you for the beauty of holiness, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Because you're, you're, we are your servants. Because from the womb of our mothers, your grace is, has reached us. We serve a God who is the Lord of Lords. That one day, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that you are the, the Lord. That's why I exalt the Lord. Because Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, will be fulfilled in our life. We praise you for this week of spiritual blessings. We praise the Lord. Because to this day, you have helped us. We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Get another song. Let's sing another song. Oh, the children are going to sing a song. Amen. Let us stand up. In the beginning of the service, we already prayed with the children, right? I was forgetting. <laughs> Lord, we praise you. We're thankful because of uh, this moment of fellowship with you. Yes, Lord, that you may, from this moment forward, we provide all the means for the service tonight and show to us and reveal your will, your product, the need of your people, those who come to our sanctuary the song, the text of the word, so that in everything, once again, your name may be glorified. Take us home in peace to our homes. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 The church may be seated. The service is over. To all, peace of the Lord. We have a meeting of Group C.